Hey guys, welcome back. I am Ashish, and today we will be continuing with part two of our Max Weber session. We will be dealing with Weberian ideal type model. Weber gave us an ideal type model of bureaucracy. We will be dealing with that today, and while dealing with that, we will be dealing with features of legal rational type of bureaucracy, features of officials in a bureaucracy, elements of bureaucracy, and limits on bureaucracy as Weber suggested them. So, if you have not watched the part one of Max Weber, please go and watch that first. Link for the same would be in the description of this video. So, moving ahead with our today's session, as we already know, Weber wanted to construct an ideal type or a mental map of a fully developed bureaucracy. This was not something which exists. Existed anywhere in the world. The bureaucracy model that Max Weber gave us is an utopia. It does not exist. It is just an ideal type of bureaucracy. It is a mental map or a mental construct. This ideal type is a mental construct that cannot be found in reality anywhere. So keep this in mind. What Weber gave us are features which should be existing in a particular bureaucracy. Every bureaucracy should strive towards being an ideal bureaucracy, but none of the bureaucracies in the world are ideal. So the concept of bureaucracy, Max Weber never gave a pure definition of bureaucracy. He only described it. And how did he describe it? An administrative body of appointed officials. That's all he said. As I have already told you, any government you take, it consists of two kinds of people: one who are elected people, and one who are appointed people. Elected are those who we elect as people, as citizens. We elect. Those are called as politicians. And appointed officials are the bureaucrats who are not elected by us, who are appointed on. those positions they give exams they get promoted so those are the people who get appointed these are the people who weber called as bureaucrats so bureaucracy as described by weber is an administrative body of appointed officials but keep in mind weber never defined what bureaucracy explicitly is he only described it he also described its characteristics we'll learn about these characteristics in today's session bureaucracy includes explicitly appointed officials only leaving out the elected ones as i already told you the elected officials or the politicians are not the bureaucrats bureaucrats are the appointed officials who take care of the administration weber wrote a great deal about the place of the official in a modern society for him it has an increasingly important type of social role so all the bureaucrats should have a social role this is what weber said as in the case of authority weber characterized bureaucracy into patrimonial and legal rational under patrimonial he said that traditional and charismatic authorities form the bureaucracy those are patrimonial bureaucracy so we have learned about traditional and charismatic authority in our previous session so please go back and watch that if you have not already so what traditional and charismatic authorities form those are called as patrimonial bureaucracies and what legal rational type of authority forms those are known as legal rational bureaucracy so there are two types of bureaucracy for weber patrimonial and legal rational the legal rational bureaucracy is popularly known as the weberian model the ideal type of model that weber gave us that is nothing but the legal rational bureaucracy that he was talking about so i hope this is clear moving on characteristics of legal rational bureaucracy now there are certain characteristics we'll learn about these uh, six characteristics in this slide now keep in mind we'll learn about these in more detail when we come to our topic of elements of bureaucracy these are the characteristics that weber listed should be in a legal rational bureaucracy these are the ideal characteristics that every bureaucracy should have so what characteristics every bureaucracy should have official business is conducted on a continuous and regulated basis so there should be a continuous business that should occur in a bureaucracy so official business should be a continuous and on a regulated basis an administrative agency functions in accordance with stipulated rules everything you perform everything you do should be according to legal and rational rules stipulated rules everything should be very clear according to what is being written down in documents so there should be stipulated rules for every function you are functioning this is how administrative agency should function and this is characterized by three interrelated attributes he gave three interrelated attributes these are first is the powers and functions of each official is defined in terms of impersonal criteria so whatever powers and functions every officer or official has that should be impersonal that should not be related to his personal biases his personal judgments personal emotions so all his powers and functions should be impersonal in nature this is the first attribute of a uh, functions of an administrative agency he says second attribute is the of official is given matching authority to carry out his responsibility now we have seen this point in our classical theory also every classical thinker be it feol be it guli karvik all of them stressed on this point that if you are giving someone some responsibility you should also give them 
equal amount of authority so that he can carry out his responsibilities right same thing weber also says weber says official should be given matching authority to carry out his responsibility and the third attribute he says is the means of compulsion at his disposal are strictly limited and the conditions under which their employment is legitimate are clearly defined basically everything should be clear in written rules be it the means of compulsion as at his disposal so whatever the means of compulsion that the officer has whatever compulsory actions he can make his subordinates to do those compulsory functions and compulsory powers should be written down in rules clearly and these means of compulsion should be strictly limited and the conditions under which their employment is legitimate and all of these things should be clearly defined the third characteristic that we will see is every official and every office is a part of hierarchy of authority very simply there should be a proper hierarchy in every bureaucracy there should be a proper line of command there should be a proper chain of superiors from lowest level to highest level or from highest level to lowest level however you see it there should be a proper hierarchy every official and every office is a part of hierarchy of authority higher officials or offices perform supervision and the lower officers or officials have the right to appeal so what higher offices do mostly their work is of supervision and what lower offices do mostly their work is of appealing to the higher offices so the fourth characteristic he says should be in a bureaucracy is officials do not own the resources necessary for rendering the duties but they are accountable for use of official resources official business and private affairs official revenue and private income are strictly separated what this means is you should not use the office property for your personal use for example if you are given a phone on your desk you should not use that phone to call your family members every 2 hours every day of the week what you are doing is you are misusing the phone that is given to you so the office properties or the office resources should not be used for personal reasons and personal use this is what he means officials do not own the resources necessary for rendering the duties your desk phone is a resource which is necessary for rendering your duty but you do not own that phone it is not your own phone but they are accountable for use of official resources you are accountable for using it so use it judiciously official business and private affairs official revenue and private income are strictly separated so whatever your private business is do not mingle them with official business official business and private affairs are strictly separated for example if as a civil servant you are signing a particular deal with someone you should not give a very lucrative deal to that person just because he is your brother or he is your jija or sala or whatever so basically official business and private business should be different official revenue and private income should be different so this is what it means you should not use official resources for your own personal use fifth characteristic of every bureaucracy that weber says should be is offices cannot be appropriated by the incumbents as private property so if you are assigned as a manager in some company keep in mind that you can be also removed from that position so you should not appropriate that position appropriation of position means grabbing that position for your own personal use so offices cannot be appropriated by the incumbents by the people who are in that position they cannot be appropriated by those people as their own private property this is the fifth characteristic sixth characteristic is administration is conducted on the basis of written documents so there should be written documents there should be a record of everything you are doing anything that you do any function that you undertake should go down as history so that it can be referred back to again so everything that you do should be written down administration is conducted on a written basis on a on the basis of written documents so these are the six characteristics of legal rational bureaucracy that every bureaucracy should have that weber says moving on we will see what characteristics the officials should possess in a bureaucracy that weber said the first characteristic is staff members are personally free observing only the impersonal duties of their offices so personally they are free whatever the staff members are whatever the officials in bureaucracy are all of them all of those staff members are personally free they only observe those duties which are impersonal in nature you should be neutral in the handling of your duties this is the first characteristic of the official of any bureaucracy second characteristic that weber says is they are appointed to an official position on the basis of a contract so you should abide by that contract you should follow the contract that you have signed so whatever appointment has been done to bureaucracy it should be on the basis of contract and again that contract should be respected by the 
person who is getting appointed the third characteristic is an official exercises authority delegated to him in accordance with impersonal rules and his loyalty is expressed through faithful execution of his official duties so how loyal you are to the organization or how loyal you are to the supervisors that can be expressed only through faithful execution of your duties and nothing else giving your superior a bottle of whiskey or a bottle of scotch or tequila will not help expressing your loyalty towards the organization or loyalty towards the superior or your loyalty is expressed only through faithful execution of your duties this is the third characteristic of any official in a bureaucracy fourth one is his appointment and job placements depend upon his professional qualifications there should be a merit based selection of every individual his professional qualifications should speak for him his appointment and job placements should depend on upon his professional qualifications fifth is his administrative work is full time occupation because you are administering your district your state your nation because because you are an administrator as an administrator that is your full time occupation it should not be that you have five other businesses running on the side administrative work should be your full time occupation is the fifth characteristic sixth one is his work is rewarded by regular salary and by prospects of career advancement so whatever rewards you need for your work that should be by regular salary and prospects of career advancements and nothing else seventh one is there is a clear cut hierarchy of officials again hierarchy is a characteristic of bureaucracy as a structure also and hierarchy is a characteristic of officials also because you are at a higher position and because there is someone at a lower position than you there is a hierarchy existing between officials also right so there is a clear cut hierarchy of officials and as a structure of bureaucracy also there should be hierarchy so this is the seventh characteristic and the eighth characteristic that weber says is the official is subjected to a unified control and disciplinary system so he should be disciplined he should have a unified control by his supervisors these are the eight characteristics that weber says every official should possess these are the features of officials in a bureaucracy now to sum it up we'll see what weber says in short according to weber the purely bureaucratic type of administrative organization is capable of attaining the highest degree of efficiency so if you have to achieve the highest degree of efficiency the type of administrative organization that you have should be purely bureaucratic and by this he means it should be purely legal rational bureaucracy and not patrimonial bureaucracy which is based on traditional and charismatic authority it should be legal rational bureaucracy it should be be purely bureaucratic type of administrative organization only then will you be able to achieve the highest efficiency thus it is the most rational known means of carrying imperative control over human beings so when you have your purely bureaucratic type of efficiency that is the most rational type of bureaucracy and most rational means of controlling the human beings it is superior to any other form of organization in precision stability discipline and reliability so whatever factor you consider it is superior to any other form of organization it is completely indispensable it is very much needed it is completely indispensable for the needs of mass administration in modern times today as a bureaucracy if we need anything we need the purely bureaucratic type or the legal rational type people once ruled by bureaucracy can never think of any other alternative this is one of the very important statements given by weber he says that once you are ruled by bureaucracy you can never go back to any other alternative type of bureaucracy you cannot select a charismatic leader and a traditional leader once you are ruled by bureaucracy you can never think of any other alternative to sum it up it is the most efficient most rational and permanent and indispensable form of any administrative organization so i hope this is clear to you moving on now we'll deal with some basic elements of ideal type bureaucracy that weber gave us so if you summarize all the elements that weber gave us all the characteristics of ideal type bureaucracy or the legal rational type of bureaucracy we can summarize them as seven elements that any bureaucracy should contain these seven elements are impersonal order rules sphere of competence hierarchy separation of personal and public ends written document and monocratic type so we'll deal with every one of these in detail now so what is impersonal order as we already know we have discussed it so many times now your personal biases and your personal emotions should not come into play as an administrator when you are administering this is nothing but impersonal order in very simple terms so weber emphasized that the official should perform their duties in an impersonal manner the idea of impersonal order should orient the actions of bureaucrats both in the issuance of commands to subordinates and their obedience to them so as an administrator there are some people 
who are below you and there are some people who are above you your managers and your superiors so in both the situations while you are issuing commands to your subordinates and while you are obeying your orders of your own superiors in both of these situations you should be impersonal according to merton now merton is a very important critic of weber we'll study him in more detail when we study criticisms of weber's model so according to merton authority the power of control which derives from an acknowledged status inheres in the office not in a particular particular person who performs the official role so if you have the authority to command someone that is basically because you are in that position not because you are someone or someone's brother or sister or someone's son you are not as a person commanding them you are as a position commanding someone so authority inheres in the office it is inherent in the office that you are in authority inheres in the office and not in the particular person not because you are son of some superstar you are able to command them but because you are in certain position of power that is why you are able to command them this is what merton says this is how impersonal you should be weber emphasizes on depersonalization of relationship in bureaucracy basically you should get depersonalized your personal biases and personal emotions should not come into play this is the first element which is nothing but impersonal order there should be impersonal order in every bureaucracy now when we'll study these elements of ideal type bureaucracy you will understand why we call this model as ideal type because all of these elements do not actually exist to their full extent right i mean no administrator can be truly impersonal when it actually comes down to proving it somewhere or the other they bring their personal emotions and personal biases into play so impersonal order is one of such elements second element we'll learn about are rules we have said so much about rules now we'll summarize everything that we have learnt about the fundamental characteristics of weberian rational legal authority is the attribute of continuous organization of official functions bound by rules we have seen this in our characteristics of legal rational bureaucracy the first point that we saw was that the functions should be continuous and they should be on a regulated basis this is what it means there should be a continuous function based on the rules that are written down these rules may be technical rules or norms whatever they may be they may be norms or they may be technical rules very detailed rules whatever they may be their rational application however requires specialized training so you need to be trained to use those rules specialized training should be there so that you become aware of their rules and you start using them more effectively in this regard again merton felt adherence to the rules originally conceived as a means becomes an end in itself so what do you mean by means and end if you have to achieve something that is an end that you have to achieve and how you achieve it is the means so the rules were created originally to be the means you know to achieve something but basically what has happened is they have become an end in itself in today's times if you see administrators give too much of importance to rules every checklist should be checked so what was originally conceived as a means to make something more effective and more transparent has now become itself more opaque so too much of adherence to rules this is also what merton said too much of adherence to rules becomes an end in itself there occurs the familiar process of displacement of goals whereby an instrumental value becomes a terminal value so there is a displacement of goals whatever the goals of organization you have to achieve now that is not the goal only the rules become your goal so there is a displacement of goals that happen whereby an instrumental value which was very instrumental which was very important before now becomes a terminal value rules become more important than the game itself as we have said already what were conceived as a means they become an end in itself and they become more important than the game itself this apart rules cause procedural delays as they create complications in administration this is one of the drawbacks of rules they cause procedural delays for example if you have to get five signatures from an official before starting your business that unnecessarily creates procedural delays in the execution of your functions so this is the second element that is the rules the third element is the sphere of competence now what is sphere of competence according to weber a specified sphere of competence involves a sphere of obligation to perform functions which have been marked off as part of a systematic division of labor so there are some duties which you have to perform as a part of division of labor there are certain functions assigned to every position and every person right so there are some functions assigned to you as part of that division of labor so there is a obligation on your part to perform those functions this is a part of sphere of competence 
Second part of sphere of competence is the provision of the incumbent with the necessary authority to carry out these functions. So basically to carry out your functions, the first point we saw that you are obligated to carry out some functions. So to carry out your functions, you should have the necessary authority. This is the second part of sphere of competence. The third part of sphere of competence is the clearly defined means of compulsion subject to definite conditions in their uses. So there are some means of compulsion assigned to you. You can give orders, you can give commands, you can compulsorily make someone do something so these means of compulsion at your disposal are under definite conditions there are definite conditions for their use you cannot use them indefinitely and you should use them in these definite conditions so these are the three components of sphere of competence Moving on, the fourth element we'll learn is hierarchy. Now we are dealing with hierarchy since so long now. All of module two we have dealt with hierarchy. You know everything about it. You know that what hierarchy means. It means the top-down model, the scalar chain, the pyramidical model, whatever the positions that run down from the highest level to the lowest level that is known as hierarchy, a particular chain of command that runs down. So according to Weber, every office and every official is a part of hierarchy. We have seen this again in our previous slides. Under this system, the lower office functions under the control of higher office we have seen this also most of the work of higher office is of supervision and most of the work of lower office is of appealing to the higher office he attaches greater importance to the principle of hierarchy in the organization of offices and also in regard of administrative staff who man them so basically Weber gives importance to hierarchy in two senses in the first sense that there should be a principle of hierarchy in the organization of offices as a structure as a whole should be hierarchical this is the first sense that Weber attaches hierarchy to and in the second sense that administrative staff who mends those positions should also be hierarchical there should be divisions again within the staff who handles them so every office and every official is a part of hierarchy remember this the fifth element is separation of personal and public ends we have seen this again whatever your personal business is that should be kept apart from your public business as an administrator you should not bring in your personal business into your functions and also you should not use the public property or public resources for your personal uses so Weber pleads for separation of administrative staff or officials from their ownership of the means of administration what are the means of administration the resources that are at your disposal for example your desk phone so administrative staff should should be separated from the ownership of their means of operation you do not own your means of administration incumbent or the people who are in that position the incumbents cannot use his office position for personal ends this is very simple the office property is separated from personal property at the same time the official is accountable for the use of office property we have already seen this so we will deal with our next element now the sixth element is nothing but the written documents there should be written documents and this element is at the heart of Weberian bureaucracy. Weber says that everything should be written down, all the rules should be written down and whatever functions you are performing every day, those functions should also be written down. So there should be written documents. All administrative acts, decisions and rules are recorded in writing, even in cases where oral discussion is the rule or is even mandatory. So even when there is super secret meeting that is happening where you have that oral discussion should be mandatory even then there should be something that is recorded in writing this is what Weber says because everything should go down in history because so that you can come back and refer to that later on so everything should be written down first of all there should be written rules and second of all every meeting that you are conducting every function that you are performing should also be written down in the documents these documents make the administration accountable to the people it is because of these documents that you can ask for these documents you can ask for these records via right to information RTI if you know that so these documents actually make administration accountable to the people this is how people can make the administration accountable to them and provide a ready reference for future action so that you can come back and refer them later this is our sixth element which is nothing but written document now this seventh and the last element is nothing but monocratic type it means that certain functions performed by bureaucracy cannot be performed by any other organization. They monopolize certain functions and only the authorized official can perform that functions, making them monocratic in nature. So if you understand what monocracy means, monocracy is something which can be done only by you and not by someone else. That is something which is monocratic. Only one person performs that function. So if you know what monocracy means, you should understand that monocratic type is the seventh element of Weber's ideal type bureaucracy. Weber says that whatever functions the bureaucracy performs should be the functions that only bureaucracy can perform and no one else can perform bureaucracy actually monopolizes certain functions and that is why they are good at it and that is why they are experts at it this is the seventh and the last element of Weber's ideal type bureaucracy 
so now uh, apart from the seven characteristics or seven elements of ideal type bureaucracy mohit bhattacharya who is again an indian scholar mohit bhattacharya deduced two sets of characteristics for weber's model he says that first set is structural characteristics and second set is behavioral characteristics in structural characteristics he talks about division of work being one of the elements division of work hierarchy system of rules role specificity so we have dealt with in our seven characteristics we have dealt with hierarchy we have dealt with rules and in behavioral characteristics we have dealt with impersonality and rule orientation and rationality also so what basically mohit bhattacharya gave us was some different characteristics like division of work and neutrality which we did not deal explicitly in elements of ideal type bureaucracy which were inherently somewhere or the other placed in them but explicitly we did not deal with this so mohit bhattacharya deduced these eight characteristics two set of four each these eight characteristics neutrality being one of the other principles that we have not dealt upon now what is the difference between neutrality and impersonality now impersonality basically means only with your personal emotions and personal biases right neutrality is based on actually two senses first is your personal neutrality you should be neutral to your personal friends and personal relatives which is nothing but impersonality this is the first sense of neutrality in a second sense neutrality also means political neutrality every administrator should be politically neutral they should not align themselves to certain political party and why is this so because political parties come and go after after every election there can be a new political party at the helm of the nation so political parties come and go but what is continuous is bureaucracy bureaucracy is a continuous thing bureaucracy is what fills the gap between the different ideologies of different parties that come into power so there should be neutrality of two types first should be impersonal that is neutrality based on personal nature and second should be political neutrality on behalf of the administrators so i hope elements of ideal type bureaucracy are clear now i hope what weber meant by ideal type bureaucracy is clear now weber said that every bureaucracy in the world should try to achieve these elements should try to come closer to the ideal type model given by weber so moving on there is another concept given by weber which are limits or control over bureaucracy while emphasizing on the necessity of bureaucracy weber was aware of the fact that the bureaucracy has inherent tendency of accumulation of power so weber said that bureaucracy is necessary bureaucracy is indispensable bureaucracy is very much needed and demanded in today's times while saying this weber also recognized that bureaucracy can assume too much power to themselves so they have an inherent tendency of accumulation of power this is what weber was aware of the sources of this power could be seen in the special knowledge which the official possess so bureaucrats are basically experts in their fields the work that they do cannot be done by anyone else so they have a special knowledge with regards to their own field right so this special knowledge gives them a particular ego and gives them a particular attitude and this is why they assume too much power in themselves these are the sources of power the special knowledge that they possess are the sources of the power the ego that the attitude that they show he was convinced that bureaucratization was inevitable and that bureaucrats gained power he was convinced of this that bureaucrats gained power and there has to be bureaucratization and this is why he gave that limits on bureaucracy we'll learn about them now weber registered any identification of bureaucracy with rule by officials now if you remember the term bureaucracy was given by vincent de gourney in 1745 if you remember what vincent de gourney said about the term bureaucracy is he associated the term bureaucracy with the rule of officials what weber says is there should not be rule by officials officials should not assume too much power or appropriate too much power to themselves weber registered any identification of bureaucracy with rule of officials in order to prevent the bureaucracy from acquiring powers weber suggested certain mechanism for limiting the scope of systems of authority in general and bureaucracy in particular so in general there should be something that limits the authority given to the bureaucrats right so he gave us five mechanisms to limit that bureaucracy which appropriates too much power to themselves and these five categories are very simple collegiality separation of powers amateur administration direct democracy and representation we'll learn about them now collegiality first limit he says is collegiality 
this is very simple if you remember or if you know that there is a term known as collegium in polity you might have dealt with this in polity right collegium is a group of people who select supreme court of india judges right so what collegium or collegiality means taking decisions as a group of people some people come together they form a group and they take decisions so there is a collegiality collegiality comes from colleagues the term colleagues give us collegiality in a monocratic bureaucracy at each stage of official hierarchy one person and one person only had the responsibility for taking a decision this makes the bureaucracy more powerful because one person only has the all the power this is what monocracy means right so one person has all the power this is what makes bureaucracy more powerful to prevent this weber suggested principle of collegiality involving others in the decision making process so one person should not have all the power decision should be made by a group of people this is nothing but principle of collegiality very simple right disadvantages are speed of decision and attribution of responsibility so decision making speed reduces because there is now controversy and differences in opinions of every member of the group who is taking the decision so speed of decision reduces this is the disadvantage and attribution of responsibility also gets diverted if a decision turns out to be a wrong decision who should be held responsible out of the five people who took the decision right so attribution of responsibility is also hampered this is the disadvantage of collegiality separation of powers is the other limit over bureaucracy that Weber suggested there should be separation of powers. This means dividing responsibility and functions between two or more bodies. For any decision to emerge, a compromise between them had to be reached. This will avoid monopoly of decision by a single body of person. So basically, whatever functions you are performing, those functions in an organization should be separated so that every function is not concentrated in the hands of one person only. This is nothing but separation of powers. The responsibility and functions and the power should be separated among individuals. This will avoid people gaining too much power in themselves. Their powers are separated among different people. But the disadvantage of this kind of limit is inherently unstable system because one of the authorities was always bound to have edge over the other. How much ever you separate the power, someone will be there who will have a certain kind of edge over the other. So this is an inherently unstable system. This is the disadvantage of separation of power being a limit on bureaucracy. The third limit on bureaucracy that Weber suggested was amateur administration. What this means is amateur means who are new to the business, who are not as professional as senior bureaucrats are. We'll see how. Possibility of professional administration becoming powerful. Weber suggested to involve amateur administration in certain activities. Now what is professional administration? Someone who is into the administration business since let's say 10 years or let's say 20 years. What will happen is because of his special knowledge, because of his being a professional person Person, he will have a certain kind of ego or attitude towards him right so that kind of person is more probable to appropriate powers than a person who has just come a week before and joined administration right a amateur person so possibility there is a possibility of professional administration be becoming powerful what Weber suggested is to involve amateur or non-professionals in administration in certain activities such men have sufficient public esteem to command and general confidence disadvantages of this type is the system could not measure up to the demands for expertise which modern society made and where the professional assisted amateur it is always the professional who dominated the scene so basically wherever you keep professionals and amateur at the same room professionals will always dominate the amateurs right this is the disadvantage so basically there is a certain kind of expertise that every professional will demand from the amateurs so amateur will not be able to keep up to those demands of expertise professionals will always dominate the amateurs this is the disadvantage of amateur kind of administration as a limit on bureaucracy the fourth limit that Weber suggested is direct democracy now there are two types of democracies as a form of government there are two types of democracies which are direct and indirect this you study in polity if you have not studied under polity yet please google about what is direct and indirect and differences between them so fourth and fifth type of limits are related to those now democracy as a term means giving power in the hands of people true power in the hands of people is nothing but democracy direct democracy is that type of democracy where you actually give power in the hands of people you know some elements like referendum plebiscite recall these are the elements of direct democracy if some policy has to be made people vote for that particular policy and in indirect democracy what happens is 
पीपल इलेक्ट रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑन देर बिहाफ पॉलिटिशियंस आर इलेक्टेड एंड दीज पॉलिटिशियंस टेक डिसीजन्स फॉर पीपल पीपल डू नॉट टेक डिसीजन्स फॉर पॉलिसीज दैट आर बींग फॉर्मुलेटेड पॉलिटिशियंस टेक डिसीजन्स फॉर पॉलिसीज एंड इन डायरेक्ट डेमोक्रेसी पीपल देम सेल्स वोट फॉर द पॉलिसीज वॉट एवर पॉलिसी आर बींग मेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट दोज पॉलिसीज आर पुट आउट टू वोट एंड पीपल वोट फॉर दोज पॉलिसीज दिस इज डायरेक्ट डेमोक्रेसी सो वॉट वेबर सेज इज वेबर सेज ब्रिंग इन डायरेक्ट डेमोक्रेसी इन साइड ब्यूरोक्रेसी ऑल्सो एंड हाउ टू डू that not in the hands of people but in the hands of an assembly to limit the power of bureaucracy weber suggested direct democracy where the officials or the bureaucrats the officials were guided by and answerable to an assembly so there should be an assembly who is directly guiding the bureaucrats and the bureaucrats are answerable to that assembly short term of office permanent possibility of recall these are some examples which was designed to serve the purpose of direct democracy what are the disadvantages in this kind of limit on bureaucracy this system is possible only in small organization and in local governments if it is a large bureaucracy direct democracy is not possible you cannot have an assembly to guide and answerable to a large bureaucrats right so this is the fourth kind of limit the fifth kind of limit that weber suggests should be on bureaucracy is representation another method of limiting bureaucracy is sharing of authority of bureaucracy with the elected representatives of the people so in indirect democracy people elect representatives politicians are elected right so people elect representatives so what weber suggests is to limit bureaucracy sharing of authority of bureaucracy with the politicians so share the authority politicians should share half of authority and bureaucrats should share half of authority this kind of sharing should be there between direct representatives and and the appointed officials so fifth kind of limit is representation disadvantage of this kind is there is a possibility of representatives being bureaucratized to so politicians themselves become bureaucratized there is a possibility of this this is a disadvantage however weber thought that through this medium there was a greater possibility of check on bureaucracy this is the best method of limiting the bureaucracy from assuming or appropriating too much power this is the best method of limiting the bureaucracy this is what weber said presentation so basically we are done with today's session the third session will deal with criticisms and relevance of weber's model the fourth session and final session will deal with post weberian views and post weberian models so hold on to that those will be coming out soon hope to see you soon again in my next session peace out